Hey guys, Kiwi Sylveon, and welcome back to Cinderella Phenomenon. We chose Fritz, so we're going to have more ups and downs and sideways and backwards and all kinds of emotions. We're going to have all the feels, people. Ooh, got a haircut. <clears throat> I'm in town with Waltz because Parfait needs supplies for her potions, and we're the only ones available to get them for her. I don't know why I feel on edge. Don't worry, princess. I won't let anything bad happen to you. Well, you know, you wouldn't have even bit have to be here if a lady Parfait hadn't placed so many orders. I don't understand why she has to get everything today. Surely she can't just pick them up. Surely she can pick them up tomorrow. If she was more patient, I wouldn't have needed to go out at all today for such a bothersome chore. Lady Parfait has been receiving a lot of orders lately. She needs to keep up with the demand somehow. Hmm? Let's make this quick. Of course. My eyes wander to the shop right in front of me. This should be the place. Knock knock. How can I help? Oh, it's you. This is the witch who came into the market some time ago with mud on her shoes. What can I do for you two? We need all the items on this list, please. I like how I, he's a boy, but I got given the manly tone voice. Because I can't do, like, boy-ish. Because I'm a girl. <laughs> Just like boys can't do girl voices, girls can't really do boys without having that little upper part. Once holds out the list, holds out the list Parfait gave him. The witch surveys the list, then gives a thoughtful nod. I'll collect these for you right away. It'll be only a few moments. The witch disappears into her back room. I fold my arms as we wait, my thoughts drifting. We'll be finished before you know it, princess. Okay, now we just suddenly went to a girl. Because I can't do, like boy high pit like he's supposed to be a boy boy but yeah oh well <sighs> well look who it is hello again little girl and it seems you're here again with your little friend Ugh. These are the men that tried to rob me back when I was on the streets. Waltz quickly steps in front of me as if to shield me from the men. Can he even protect me? She cleans up alright, doesn't she? Almost didn't recognize her all neat. What do you want? Us? We don't want nothing. But we heard there's someone who wants you. And they're willing to pay more money than we could have ever gotten from you. The man reaches out to grab me, but Walt slaps his hand away. Good, Walt. I like you. The man's unwashed stench reaches my nose, and I try not to gag. Don't touch her. Oi, why is that? Oi, what's this? Which we appease we're... Reappears at the door and the men back off slightly when she appears. So many people! None of your business! Ah, oh, thank you, dears. These people are my customers. And now everyone's Southern Bell. Say out to this hag. Hag? I'm slightly startled when the witch leans forward to whisper this to us. Listen, you both start running, okay? You run as fast as you can and don't stop for anyone. You need to get back to the market. But, don't worry about me. I'll distract them for as long as I can. But you need to run. Go. Hey! 
Like a bad boy. This one itches. Walsh well, grabs my hand and poses me with him as we run. Not even turning back to look at when we hear the shatter of glass. That's going to be expensive to repay. She's a witch. Why w would she help us? Because she's a good witch, princess. I'm sure that she's only helping us because she wants to keep us indebted to her. Sorry about that. My mic disconnected for a split second. I hope I'm back. Okay. Sounds like I am. We continue running against the current of people. Where did they come from? This reminds me of my fanfic for Rogue's sister who I created. Hmm. The only thing that's missing is wizards. Oh wait, they have those. I managed to keep up with the Watts for a time, but it's not long before my hand slipped out of his and I'm lost to the crowd. Uh, yep, sounds like my fanfic. The minute I had separated from Walt's, I stopped. Panic begins well up inside me. Waltz! I frantically look at the crowds, trying to find him, but I fail. I need to get back to the market. Only it dawns on me that I'm in a part of town that I don't recognize. I don't know my way around this area. I knew leaving the market was a bad idea. Why is he parfait again? I'm going to give her a piece of my mind. I found her! Oh, God. I mean, to turn on my heels and run as fast as I can. I'm so panicked that I can't see what's in front of me. I don't notice the man in front of me until I crash into him. I prepared to fall, but the man braced himself just before I crashed into him. We both managed, somehow managed to remain upright. Excuse me, I... Princess? That voice. I look a bit shocked. Oh, crap. I forgot what I gave Prince for a voice. <clears throat> I might need to figure go to a repertoire somewhere. Um, I look a bit shocked. Hi! Fritz? It's really you, Princess. Princess, I... How does he remember who I am? There she is! I have no time to think. Time to run. Time to get out of here. Bye! Who? I grab his arm and pull him with me into a run. Why are we running? Somehow he's barely out of breath, despite how long we've been running. There's a sliver of irritation through me. I think those men want to sell me. What? I shake my head and I try to tug him forward. However, Fritz doesn't budge. Princess, this is getting irritating. We have to keep moving. I like how I'm like adding and I'm just ad-libbing most of this. I see her! Oh, no. Princess? Wait, Fritz is a knight. I trust you can manage these two fools. With one hand behind my back. With a nod and a confident smile, he turns his, to face the oncoming men. He moves to stand in front of me, effectively shielding me with his body. Two on one? I don't like your chances, boy. We've got no business with you. We just want the girl. Run on home. She'll be more trouble than this is worth. You'll have to get through me first. <laughs> and how are you going to stop us? With this. Hi. <laughs> Hi, Fritz. Fritz Brandis is a shirt. Brandishes his sword. What is with all the S words that are like bleh, 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 and smiles at them? First is only is second only to his father, Sir Sir Alcaster, in his ability with the sword. His skill is obvious, and just in the way he holds the blade. 
Even if I don't have a sword, isn't going to scare us away this time. A girl is worth enough gold to sort out any scratches we might get. Any closer and I'll do more than just scratch you. Get him! The fight is over as quickly as it starts. I can't keep up with Fritz's movements at first, but I'm when I'm able to focus on him again, the two men are completely immobilized. One is sprawled on the ground with Fritz's foot firmly planted in his back. The other is clamped against the wall of the alleyway with the tip of sword, Fritz's sword pressed against his neck. Well done. Well done, Fritz. You wanted you wanted to question them? Fritz is completely unscathed. I turned to look at the man against the wall, thinking he might be more capable of speech at this time. Who was going to pay you? <laughs> I'd answer her. <laughs> I watch as Fritz presses his sword against the man's neck, enough to draw a gasp out of him. It was a witch! A witch? Waltz insisted the witch we met was good, but there's just further, further proof that witches were always inherited wicked. It was a witch, I swear! We got a note with your picture. Then it burned to the pieces right before our eyes once we read it. What did the note say? Just to get you to the witch in one piece. That payment will come when that happened. How much was the payment? Answer me! One thousand gold pieces! A whole thousand! One thousand gold pieces would be enough to feed a family for years! Princess? How does anyone would ever have that kind of wealth? There would have to be nobility. Royalty, even. Or what just disguising themselves as members of the aristocrat aristocracy aristocracy something like that it's a word <laughs> no princess yeah what do you want to do with these two I look at the men and feel something icy run through my veins these men were going to abduct me there's no telling what they would have done if they had caught me Please, don't beg. What would your son say if you he heard you? He has a family. That doesn't matter. Even if I mentioned my family, it wouldn't have made a difference. Wait. What did you do to her? Do to who? The wit- The woman at the shop. What did you do to her? Nothing that can't be fixed. Did you hurt her? When neither of the men answered me, I frowned. I don't know why that witch was trying to save me, but she did try. These men can't get away with doing whatever they wish. Answer me. What did you do to her? Nothing that won't heal. The anger was nothing but a small flame burn. The anger that was nothing but a small flame burns full force in my chest. They don't deserve mercy, but gotta. They deserve to be punished, but these men were nothing but puppets to some other master. Punishing them is a waste of time. It's an additional burden that I don't care to shoulder. Princess. Promise not to come after me again. Swear it. I swear! I swear on my life you'll never see me again. I swear it as well. Let them go. As you wish. and I leave the men behind in the alleyway. 
I sigh in relief when the scenery around me becomes more familiar. From here, I can finally pop. I can probably find my way back to the Markin. Chris is so unusually quiet that I barely notice him as I become wrapped up in my thoughts. What does a witch want with me? As far as I know, I've never done anything to a witch. Princess. I'm startled when Fritz talks. Yeah? You let those men go. I wasn't expecting you to. Hmm. You showed them mercy when not everyone would have. Mercy? Is that what it was? I think Fritz is more faith in my morality. I didn't spare those men to save them. I spared them to avoid the consequences. It was difficult. The most meaningful shows of mercy are often... Are often, but... <laughs> Why is he smiling at me like that? I don't know if Fritz fidgeting. It's a sure sign that he has something else he wants to say. What is it? Where have you been, Princess? One day you just suddenly disappeared. No one in the palace seems to remember you at all. Why am I the only one who can remember you? Are you cursed, Fritz? Fritz looks shocked. Are you talking about the fairy tale curse? Yeah. No, of course I'm not. What makes you think I am? If he's not cursed, how else could he know who I am? Are you a witch or a fairy? First stares at me as if I've grown another head. <laughs> I don't understand why you're asking me this, princess. I'm definitely human. Hmm. Could he, it be that he is somehow unaware of the condition of his curse? I must speak with the Dolores and Parfait about this. Princess, what's going on? Princess! I need to get to the market as quickly as possible so I can speak to Parfait and Dolores about what Fritz's curse might be. Waltz is probably looking for me as well. Then abruptly, Fritz puts himself in front of me, blocking my path. What are you doing? I could ask you the same thing. Where are you going? I'm going to turn to the Markin. The Markin? It's a tavern for the cursed. I've been living there. Princess, are you saying that you've been cursed? Oh, I forgot. I haven't told him yet. Princess, I need answers. Please. Mm. I suppose you'll not let me leave without an explanation. Not after you suddenly disappeared like that. <sighs> Very well. Delorean Pefe. Pefe? 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 Parfait will have to wait. Fritz is convinced the only place I will be safe is is his house, and I'm not in the mood to argue with him. I won't argue with Fritz either. Look at this place. I just want the book. Sorry about that. It came out. My mic came out again. My computer has been a dodo. Hopefully I'm back. I'm probably back. Am I back? Yeah, I'm back. I can see my mic moving. Hi! Sorry about your ears. I had to test. <laughs> Fritz. Okay. I look around the modest living room. I didn't realize you had a lodging outside of your room in the palace. I grew up here. I was older than usual when I started training to be a knight, so I spent a lot of time in the house. He walks over and hands me a mug of tea. The comforting scent is of it and the realization that he has made it precisely as I prefer it makes something loosen, in, loosen inside of me. Fritz sits opposite me, his eyes bright and focused. Start at the beginning. 
<sighs> Gonna be a long cup of tea. Mug of tea, I guess. Please, princess. I need no in order to put my mind at ease. One night I was in the palace, and the next morning I was on the streets dressed in rags. I tell him about no one remembering who I am, and about my first encounter with the man that Fritz fought in the alleyway. With the men Fritz fought in the alleyway. I tell him how I was saved by those at the market. Yet I say nothing about Delora or Parfait, and I deliberately leave out the identities of the Markin borders anonymous. Smart. I'm not sure why exactly, but I feel suspicion tugging insistently at me. How is it possible for someone to be unaware of their curse? Rumpel has amnesia, and even he knows he's cursed. Fritz said that he's human. I can trust him, right? I close my eyes and will the impending headache away. Maybe Mother was right. Maybe it is important not to trust anyone, including my knight. And what is your curse? Hmm. Princess! Can I still trust you, Fritz? Fritz doesn't even bother trying to mask his shock. There is sadness in his eyes. When have I ever betrayed you, your highness? Fritz has been loyal to me ever since he was assigned to me. But every person I've trusted has turned on me apart from mother. Even my beloved doll betrayed me. How can I be so sure that Fritz won't do the same? I swore on my life that I would protect you, princess. I would never lie to you or do anything that would put you in harm's way. Mm -hmm. Cinderella, I have to complete three good deeds to break it. Cinderella? Are you sure? That fear is about... It's been reversed in my case. Oh, that... Makes sense. What will you do now? Return the mark in. I, ha I have to break my curse. I can't allow that. Unless I stay at the mark in with you. What? Why? I've been wondering where you were this whole time, princess. Trying to find you. And now that I found you, I must resume my duties. I need to protect you. And I want to make sure you're, you're safe by staying with you. You're no longer my knight, Fritz. You work for Emelange now, don't you? I'm not her personal knight. I work in shift with her other guards, so I'm not expected to stay the whole day. Besides that, I'm your knight, and I intend to fulfill that role until you no longer need my services. I failed to protect you from being cursed. Let me protect you this time, princess. Fritz is very capable. Know that he'll be able to protect me better than anyone else at the market. Save karma, because karma is awesome. Who knows how many people receive the witch's note? The witch wouldn't even need to enter the Marken herself, so long as she has others there to capture me. No matter where I am, I'm not safe, especially when I have no idea who I can trust. Stay here. Stay with me. <laughs> I'll be able to be with you, and I can keep you safe. It won't be in for long, just until you get back into the palace where you belong. And how will you do that? Nobody apart from the cursed, the witches, and the fairies remember that I'm the crown princess. I still remember you. You must be cursed as well, Fritz. There's no other explanation. I would think I'd remember if I'd been cursed, princess. I would be inclined to agree. Even Rumpel, who'd forgotten everything else, would remember that he'd been cursed. But then, what could Fritz's fairy tale be? Aww. I hadn't truly intended on staying with Fritz, but somehow the day passes by without me noticing it. 
Before I know it, night has fallen. It's far too late to attempt a return to the market on my own now. Fritz, you did this on purpose, you little jackass. Sorry, YouTube. Even if, for some reason, Fritz allowed me to leave his house. You can stay in the guest room, princess. My father returns here at night after his duties for the day are over. I'd almost forgotten. Sir Alcaster Leverton. Leverton, Fritz's father, and the commander of their order, Caldera. I thought he'd have his own room at the palace, like you do. My father's my father's never stayed the, the night at the palace, as far as I know. He always comes back to sleep here, no matter how late he leaves the palace. Or how early he has to get up to return there. Oh, hi. This is awkward. Hi. Good evening, father. Alcaster looks at me, then Fritz. Who is this? The weight of his stare makes me feel like looking away, but I manage to stare back at him coolly. This is Angelica Riella Britton, daughter of King Gennaro Britton III and the Crown Princess of the Kingdom of Angele. I'm not in the mood for games, boy. It's the truth. I told you about her when she disappeared that she'd been forgotten. Nonsense. She's been forgotten because of the fairy tale curse. Sure, mm. Alcaster's eyes are cold and calculating. I don't like the way he's looking at me. Can I go back, please? I need to crawl back to the market, please. What is your fairy tale? I don't want to tell him. Sure, Alcaster's gaze grows colder at, at, as his question is met by a long stretch of silence. I only relate really when I see Fritz about to answer for me. Cinderella! I trust you will break your curse, princess. Sir Alcaster says nothing more and I'm surprised when he slippily walks away into a bedroom and away from us. The court door closes behind him, and Fritz and I are left alone. It will make things easier if he believes us. I saw the look in the eyes. I doubt he believes us. That would be too simple. Ooh, it's a pretty room! I miss the room at the market. Sleep doesn't come easily, even though this bed is significantly more comfortable than the bed at market. Hey! That bed is awesome! Though it's run down, but it's cool! What could Fritz's curse be? I sit up in bed when I hear footsteps outside. I stare at the clock. It's almost two in the morning. You're late. My apologies. That's Sir Elcaster's voice. But I don't recognize the others. Come. We have much to discuss. The sounds of their footsteps slowly fade and silence the sounds once more. I suppose being the commander of the Order of Kadira means that he's always busy. But working at this time? Sure enough, my exhaustion coaxes me back into slumber. I close my eyes and let my desire to sleep win over my curiosity. Oh, It's true! He definitely takes after you know who. I heard that she'd rather speak- rather than speak to people, she only ever speaks to her dolls. I can believe that. She seems a little weird in the head. She's so strange. I can't believe she's going to be queen one day. <gasps> oh, 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 good morning, your highness. B 
Please excuse us. Despite my exhaustion, my sleep is brief with all thoughts swirling in my head. When I feel it's late enough, I finally step out of bed and make my way toward the living room. Sir Alcaster and Fritz are both there, but they fall silent at my entry. Sir Alcaster? Princess? Are you leaving for the palace? Yes. Will you be able to get the princess back into the palace? I will inform Mithros of the situation. Sir Mithros? But father, Sir Mithros won't... Mithros will work as quickly as possible to resolve this. In the meantime, she will be safe here, won't she? I'm stand standing close enough to Fritz that I notice his body posture stiffen. I can see the way he clenches his hands into fists and the way he squares his shoulder. Of course she is. I am her knight. Then there's no problem. I've noticed that Alcaster and Fritz's voice are different. Not enough. Oh well. Because Alcaster's is slowly low and dull and kind of boring. But Fritz is low and hightails it up. You and Sir Alcaster don't seem to be very close. Fritz says he looks away somewhat flushed, though it doesn't seem to be out of any embarrassment. Princess, I... Should I have not said anything? I noticed the way he spoke to you. And in the palace, I never saw the two of you together. I didn't think you would notice. Why? You're my knight. I spend a lot of time with you, so of course I'm aware of how others treat you. I also know what it's like to be distant from your own family. If you don't wish to speak of it, you don't need to. Thank you, Princess. Fritz clears his throat before he turns to me. His mouth so bright it seems to light up his face. Oh, that's so adorable. Would you like to get breakfast? I happen to know where the best baker in all of Angeli sells her croissants. The thoughts of croissants make my mouth water. I am in the door in seconds. I am at the door in seconds. What are you standing around for? I'm hungry. <laughs> we leave it once then. <laughs> the short route to the bakery from Fritz's house leads up us past the palace gate. Princess, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to... Fritz's voice fades into the background when I notice the royal family eating the breakfast outside. Emmeline sits underneath the shade of a cherry blossom tree, reading aloud from some book in her hand. Rod is smiling as he pours his tea for all of them, and Ophelia is looking on with clear love in her eyes for the family that surrounds her. The king laughs at something Emmeline just saying. He looks happier than I have ever seen him before. Right? I'm really happier now that I don't exist with them. Father has not, never once looked at me the way he's looking at them. They can't miss what they don't remember. I'm sorry for bringing you here. I sure have known it would be difficult. How could you have known? You're my charge. It's my job to know. Exactly how much does he know about me? I realize we've been walking as Fritz talked. Palace gates are well behind us and the royal family is thankfully out of earshot. Here we are! 
The variety of breads and pastries in the widow's bakery make my heart skip a beat. It's been a long time since I've seen such delicious looking pastries. Pick anything you want, princess. Anything? Whatever you want. I know how you, much you like your pastries. Maybe I'll finally see you smile. What? Go on in, princess. I'll be right behind you. Prince and I return to his home to eat our pastries. They are truly the best croissants I've ever had. I've had croissants before. They're meh. Not my, not my favorite. As we come to the end of breakfast, Prince turns to me, a hesitant expression on his face. Princess? Yes? I hate to say this, but I'm expected at the palace today. I'm afraid I have to ask you to stay here on your own. But the people at the market... I was planning on returning today to explain why I haven't been back. But it's not safe for you outside. I understand, but there are people I must see. I won't stay here much longer. Can I really not change your mind about staying here? I know that Fritz can certainly keep me safe. But I can't shake the feeling that I'm safer at the market. Even if it means having to save the witch that cursed me. When I don't answer, Fritz sighs and shakes his head. Very well. I'll ask for a day off so I can personally escort you back to this Markin. Tomorrow. Sorry? Take me back tomorrow. Tomorrow, then. I spend the day looking around the house. This home is so impersonal. You never know two different people live here. The rooms are so empty. Even I had my dolls in my room. As I walk around the living room, I notice a broom standing forgotten and alone in the corner. Mr. Broom? I suddenly remember the broom Dolores enchanted for me. I don't miss that broom. But this one could definitely use a ribbon. Princess? Fritz! That was fast. I have something for you. Oh, God. Hi, Delora. I found this doll in my room back at the palace. She's one of yours, isn't she? The Delora doll that was in my room, but how? She is. I thought so. Is she? Isn't she one of your favorites? Yes, she was. Until she cursed me. How did she get in your room? No idea. Perhaps one of the maids left her there. But I thought you'd like it if I brought her back for you. After finishing dinner, Fritz excuses himself to run more errands so I can return to my room. Earlier when Fritz had given her to me, I threw Delora on my bed. Delora! I now turn to glare at her, and all at once the doll comes alive with a sigh. Would you believe me if I said I was worried? No. Nope. I honestly thought you were going to act like you didn't recognize me. It made me happy that, that you said I was your favorite Angelica. You were my favorite. You wound me, princess. What are you doing here? Yay, back to the human form. Do you have any idea how, how worried Parfait was? When Ross came back alone and told us what happened, well, Parfait and Anise went into hysterics. 
The boys in Jurin looked like they were going to commit murder. When you didn't come back that night, I had a lot of trouble convincing everyone to stay at the market when they wanted to look for you. Especially Waltz. You have no idea how guilty he felt after losing you like that. They were looking for me? Princess. Why didn't you come back to the Mark Inn? I was, go I was going to, but Fritz is overprotective. I know it's not. Hush! Don't hush! I stop myself when I hear footsteps just outside the door. This is entirely unnecessary. The walls have ears, so I'll custer. Two men walk away, leaving the hallway silent. That's just another one of Sir, Sir Alcaster's late night errands. My words die in my throat when I turn to Lauren to see that she's eerily silent, her fur forehead furrowed. This presence. Delora. It's weak, but it's there. I can feel it. Delora, what are you talking about? Finally, Dolores looks at me slowly, as if now recognizing we are both in the same room. This is bad. We must return to the Markin. Now. Thank you. Yay, Chapter 4. I will take care of Chapter 4 in the next episode. Which is gonna happen now, so... I mean, like now, as in after I end this. So, yeah. I'll see you guys then. Bye!